Triple Crown here, January 6, 2024. Happy New Year. I'm set up today. This should be very interesting. I'm excited to flip the GoPro around and show you what it's like on the other side of the table. As you can see, my windows are defrosting here this morning. We have a little bit of a snowfall. I hope that doesn't deter too many people. It's not cold enough to stick, but you never know. Um, I think a lot of people will probably be anxious to spend their holiday money that they might have got at today's show. And, uh, you know, it, it could go either way today. So let's see what we got. Did a video on this not too long ago, but here is a quick look at my show setup. Not the whole thing here. You can see Mike, Cards Across America, helping me out with the tablecloth. Just makes things look a lot more professional. I have my logo there. You'll see some of my boxes are a little bit wet. That is because... Snow was really coming down when I started unloading the car and on my way up there I saw a few vehicles actually skid off the road. A little nerve wracking, but I got there safe and sound and hopefully everybody else did as well. Let's see here getting the value boxes all set up and then once I get this done, time to put the cards into the showcases. I organize them by sport and then by player. Alright, which ones are you looking at? The, the sock and the kaboom. Oh man. Yeah. I'm not gonna have anything good left, man. You're gonna take my two best cards. Um, let's see. I miss walking around. I'd rather just walk around the show, honestly. Three, okay. Just sell them in. 350. Yeah, I got it. Appreciate it. The title was accurate. There was a flurry of deals here to start the show, and you're about to see pretty much 15 minutes of craziness starting with those first two cards there. I purposely bought this Jamar sock card thinking it would probably move at this show. I typically don't like to do that, but sometimes that's how it works out. Awesome Bengals logo on it, and Kabooms, they always move. There's always a marker for the Kabooms, the downtowns. A lot of those really popular case hits, people are always asking for them. Definitely not easy to stock them and to get them in at a good price, but when I can, I almost always take the opportunity to do so. You can see Mike here with the assist getting me some smaller bills, uh, which I'm definitely going to need here a little bit later on in the show. Got it? Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. It's actually really cool. I got them all. I look like an NFL coach pulling out his playbook here, but that's not the case. I'm just pulling out my spreadsheet where I keep track of all of my active inventory. The numbers that you'll see on the sheet are what I have into the cards. If it's in parentheses, that means I'm in the money on the deal. It allows me a little bit more flexibility. Also, if a card is cross-listed on a certain platform, I can keep track of it there to make sure that it is pulled down from the online listing. And then that blank page, pretty simple, just trying to record any of my sales or any of my purchases that I make throughout the day. Allows me to track my spending and my revenue as well. Put a little stack together. Yeah, go ahead, open it up, take what you want out. Thank you. You can see I'm multitasking here, making two deals at once. And I'm going to deviate from my rule a little bit here. I know I said I'm not going to name names, but if you recognize that voice, you'll know instantly who I'm working with here. It's Ryan Card Collector 2. And he is building a stack right now. I've got a gentleman to his right who's also building a stack. Two deals at once. I'm going to have these guys add up, kind of figure out where they want to be at, and then I'll do my due diligence, try to cut them as much of a break as I can, and get some deals done here early on. Like I said, flurry of deals very early. This is probably a tough grade, right? Like, I can't imagine that's an easy grade. I'm doing a little show and tell here, showing off the collection that that Greg Olson Contenders Auto came from. Knowing Ryan, I know that he'll probably have an appreciation for some of these cards. And I like to do this every now and then. It makes the conversation and the transaction a little less robotic. It doesn't just have to be two people buying and selling cards, right? We can uh, talk about the hobby as well. Notice I hesitate on this Corbin Carroll here. That is because my sticker is pretty well above the last sale of $54. Before that, it was $82 and $84, if I'm not mistaken. 
I'm pretty much into it at that $100 mark, meaning that if I want to move this card now, I'll probably have to end up taking the L on it. But the good thing about bundling cards together is that the rest of the cards he's picked out, I am going to come out ahead on those deals that I had made in the past. And overall, it's a net positive. Again, you do not have to win on every single deal. Because I'm able to move all those cards, I can use my Carol as a tool to move those cards. And again, I'm coming out ahead as a net positive. I don't need to bat a thousand. I just need to win more than I lose. 300. That's fine. All right. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Thank you as always. Just going to write these down real quick if you don't mind. I'm always learning new things at this show and other shows as well. And here Ryan gives me a nice little tip. He tells me instead of trying to scramble to write all these down to take a picture of the deal in that way, I can track it later on when I have some more free time. I think that is extremely crucial because usually what I'm doing is I'm scrambling to get all these cards written down so that my records are clean. But what this does, it saves him time. It saves me time for when I have a little bit more open this during the show and also if I have another customer like I do right here it doesn't make them wait to get their deal done so now I can move on to this deal put it at a nine price I don't know if you can get to any of them yeah you don't want this one here okay. cool with these that's fine okay. let's uh, see what we can do so you want to be at 50 on this one $50, yeah. Okay, so that's 50 You want to be at 110 here. Yep. So 160 You What were you want to? 75 with the last PSA 9, so I just matched that. Okay, so. Here we're just evaluating some stuff. Those three cards I just set down. He told me where he wants to be at. He's cool with the stickers on these cards here, and then we're going to work out kind of a bulk discount for buying all these cards. He's already got it added up for me as well, which I greatly appreciate. He knows exactly what he wants. He sees I'm multitasking some deals just expedites the process for both of us, which I gotta say, I, I really love as a dealer. I appreciate him working with me like that. That looks right, that actually looks higher, so I'll take that number, let's get that number. Oh, that's a sick. Okay, yeah. And where would you want to be at with all those? 600. I could do like 650. 620. Don't want to go too far below 650, it'd be like 640, probably my best. Seven if you want this. I'm okay. Right. <laughs> Always be closing, right? ABC. <laughs> Just split it with me. 630? Yeah. Alright, no deal. Thanks. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. I really did not want to be below 650. I meant it when I said it there, but we were close enough where this was a 3% difference in price from where I was at compared to where he was at. And I got to tell you, I'm not going to walk away from a deal like that. I also want to build the relationship here. I'm sure this gentleman and I will do future deals down the road. He was extremely fair with me throughout the process. And I always try to follow the golden rule, you know, treat others the way that you want to be treated. He was very respectful, very easy to work with, and I wanted to definitely try to reciprocate that as much as I could on my end. So I'm glad we got this deal done. Worked out well for both sides. Hey, it's already going well. Yeah. So. <laughs> Remind me of your name. I don't know if JT. Pleasure. Nice to meet you, man. Oh, I mean, I met you. Man. Well, nice to formally <laughs> meet deal. you. Yeah. yeah. Have a good one, man. You like the rest of the show. You too. And what's... Is that Chrome Sapphire? Is that what that is? Yeah, 2019. Once you've been on the show circuit for a while, as they say, you'll run into people who you've done many deals with before. This particular gentleman I bought from and sold to many times in the past. And throughout time, you get to learn people's names, you get to learn how they approach the hobby, what they like to collect, and kind of what they're looking for when they're going to shows. This particular guy right here, I know that he is a big raider. He has a fantastic eye, has a very high gem rate, and he's probably going to be looking for some slab candidates here. 
looking for some of my raw cards. We're going to try to make a deal work here, but knowing this information allows me to kind of curate what I might recommend to him. Also kind of talk about some of the aspects of the cards that might be important to him, such as if they have print lines, maybe they're a little OC, just to kind of help him make a better decision as to which of my cards he wants to go after and hopefully end up closing a sale on what the deal. Your, what's the Edgar Auto from this year's archives? Okay. It's, let me see what the design is. Um, 2023 archives? Yeah, Tops Hit Stars, 1957 is the design. Let me see the Stroud. It's dumb for me to buy that. If you don't, someone will, right? Yeah, <laughs> they started at 40, they're down to 25. It's just a question of where it settles in at. Probably will dip more with Prism coming I, out, I would guess. I think so. I'm I'm good on those, but let's stay in football for a while. Help yourself. Let me see this. And purple power. Well that's gold, sort of. One's got some surface issues on it. This one's cool. This little guy's got a little bit of hype. He does. Can I look at this one? Yeah, go ahead. Another good example of good show etiquette here. He's asking for permission before taking the card out of the sleeve in the top litter. It might seem like a really small thing, but trust me, a lot of dealers will appreciate you at least asking before just doing something. So big thank you to him for doing that. I'm usually not too picky, but I do know some guys who are. You're going to like it, but try me. 160. Where does that put this one at? Like 50 bucks. Okay. Just because there's a bunch of 30s and I'm paying over some comps. No deal. Appreciate you. Once again, five of the six cards he picked out here, I am already in the black on. The Jamar Chase slab is the only one that I am not fully back to even on. But I'm gladly going to make this deal, especially with someone who I've done a lot of deals with before. He gave me a really fair offer. There was some give and take on both sides, and to me, that's kind of the healthiest way to make a deal. Just giving a little as a dealer and giving a little as a buyer. Haven't had a chance to show this yet. Here's someone trying to sell to me, asking me if I'm buying, and I figured this would be fun to kind of show the process. Let's see how this one plays out. Might be interested in this one. Let's take a look. Do you know what you want on it? Let me know if you need any questions, man. Yeah, I'll just save you time. 94 was the last raw sold. I have it marked for 100. Okay. I mean, you can look them up. The PSA 9s, for some reason, they were going for like 80 bucks. But the raw 94, and I think there was like a sell, like in the last five, there was like like 117, there was one in there. Yeah. They're all over the place, like 76, 80, 117. They're in between 80 and 110 bucks probably get asked often what tool do I use to check prices it really depends on the card here I have alt pulled up because this is a PSA slab I can scan it really quickly and it's a card that is transacted often I find alt is my go-to on cards like this where there's a lot of high volume for sales data and they are graded by either PSA or Beckett I'd have to pass them. I'd be too far off. This, this is what I'm seeing on it. Here's what I'm seeing on alt. I think we're going to be too far apart with this one, but I always want to make sure when someone shows me their stuff for sale, I thank them for their time and tell them to enjoy the show and uh, for taking the time to stop by the table. It is greatly appreciated. For the sake of the length of the video, I'm going to fast forward this clip here. But again, kind of the same thing I talked about. This is a guy who comes by pretty much every show. We've done several deals before, even some deals outside the show. And he sells on TikTok, so I kind of know what price range he's looking for. I know what to look out for him. And usually I'll hit him up even before I end up going to the show. I'll pull out some of the things that maybe 
I picked up during the show to show him just to see how much I can help him out because he's always done me well and I want to return the favor whenever I can. So we come to a deal here to add on to the total. Are you going to talk me down? Uh, 15. Yeah. Always talk him down. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. I always tell kids who try to pay full sticker to talk me down a little bit just to help them learn how to negotiate and stuff. I think card shows are a good practice for that. These guys were really kind. I let them pick out a few extra cards from my value box as little throw-ins, but this young man was really excited about the Hadley rookie slab that I had, and uh, that's one of the best parts about the show. All right, Jerry Springer style final thoughts here on the show. You see my sales total there, 1888. And this was a phenomenal show. You can see I am not moving a lot of high dollar cards. In fact, I did not have a lot with me because I have been gobbled up by a lot of repackers in recent weeks. And being able to restock quality cards at reasonable prices has proven to be a big challenge lately. But it's a challenge that I'd much rather have than not being able to move cards at all. I will have to do quite a bit of work before my next show, Restocking. I gladly do that, but now it's time to show you some of what I bought because really after those clips, I spent the majority of the time walking around while Mike Cards Across from America uh, helped me out quite a bit. So big thank you to Mike on that. You see here, this is one of two deals that I made with this really awesome Calvin Johnson Snow Catch card. This is a blue refractor. That card is staying with me. That is not one for the inventory. That one is staying with me. I absolutely love that card. It's one that I've loved for 10 years, and this is my first time ever owning one of the blue refractors. I did find a pink refractor in there as well. That one I'm not keeping. I just want the blue because it's the color match. But the big boy in this deal, as you see, is the Roman Reigns Kaboom. I usually start to sell a lot of wrestling stuff during WrestleMania season, which is coming up here through the winter months into the springtime when WrestleMania occurs. So you'll see me start to pick up a bit more wrestling around this time, just because this is actually when I get asked about it the most, I feel. And the second deal here is one that I took a chance on. I bought these Birdos pretty much at full rip. I paid a little bit more than I really wanted to on this deal. I got a few more cards to kind of cushion myself, but those two Burrow Mosaic rookies were really what I was after. I find myself wanting to be able to stash more cards, especially with how quick I've moved a lot of things. In Burrow right now, a lot of people are scared, and I view fear as an opportunity, especially in the sports card market. You gotta zig when others zag. And with how hot Burrow has been around here, I think the injury really put a damper on things with the Bengals missing the playoffs. I don't know how the quarterback market will shape out. But I know number nine is very loved where I'm at. And I'm willing to take a chance on a few cards that are selling pretty much at the lowest price they have been since he tore his ACL, if not even lower than that. Maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe the bottom is going to fall out. But I've been wrong on other things before. It won't kill me. It'll only make me stronger, right? So that is it for the day. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I have a new vlog that should be out later in the week from what I bought the following day. And also, if you'd like to see me follow up on some of my purchases that I make at some of these shows walking around, seeing how I did, did I make something on the deal, did I lose something, what was the end result, love to hear your thoughts on that. Until next time, take care, stay safe, be kind.